mechanical execution of work. And I, I always looked at this as very subjective because neat and workmanlike manner to me and to you is probably going to be different. And every jurisdiction has inspectors out in the field making these determinations. So it's kind of subjective. But we have an industry standard, uh, an ANSI NECA standard here, standard for good workmanship and electrical construction that we can lean on to try to bring everybody to the same conclusion as to what's accepted. It helps us come to consensus. Uh, in our jurisdiction, there are four electrical inspectors. And the three guys that I work with, they uh, they come and ask questions and, and I give them the, the years of experience and input to help them develop those, those parameters and understand the boundaries. When I began inspecting 34 years ago, the chief electrical inspector I was under actually asked me to uh, expand my definition of neat and workmanlike <laughs> because I was red tagging or, or there were quite a few discrepancies on workmanlike uh, installations that didn't comply. So my definition had to expand a little bit. He, he said, I'm not telling you not to inspect for workmanlike, but your definition of neat needs to expand a little bit because nothing's passing. So we had a, we had a, a, a season of, of red rejections that were uh, on work, neat and workmanlike that I had to expand my definition a little bit. Well, I know I, I remember this just like it was yesterday when I decided to, to go into an inspection job. And I worked for a company, uh, multi-craft contractors up in Northwest Arkansas, and they were always known as a company that did things right. And that's how I grew up. I worked in a company that uh, you did it right or you didn't do it. And the guy pulled me aside when he found out I was going to take an inspection job. And he said, you don't really know what you're getting into, do you? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, you're going to see things that you never dreamed that anybody could do out in the field. That's right. And being naive, I thought, no, this guy has no clue what he's talking about. Everybody does work like it's supposed to be. And and I can say over these years as being an inspector that uh, that guy was right. He, you're going to see things that uh, you think folks just set up at night and like why Wile E. Coyote sets up and draws this stuff up and tries to make it work, you know, and, and uh, you see stuff that just makes you shake your head, you know. But, uh, well, jo Joseph, one of the things I've enjoyed about being an inspector is the discovery of going to a job. You never know what you're going to encounter. You never know the people you're going to meet and you never know what type of job you're going to be inspecting. So it's always a surprise. It's something new. Uh, it could be repetitious, but it's not the same gentleman or electrician or technician actually doing the work. So it's a variety of things that's taking place. It's like Christmas every day. It you is. You never know what you're going to get. So we'll jump into some uh, workmanlike conditions here and let James talk about some of these photos that we have here. This was a, a photo of one of the, I think one of our guys inspect, uh, made this inspection, but if you'll notice in the, there's non-metallic sheet uh, that's been cut and inserted over the wires and you can't read it, but there's markings on each one of those sheets identifying each circuit. So this is a method for identifying the circuits during the rough so that when you're ready to start trimming the panel and trimming out the house, you've already got at least a working knowledge of what those circuits are and they're identified at least for that tech or the electrician to uh, label the panel. And this is probably a good time to bring out something else in this photo that some folks aren't aware of that a lot of jurisdictions and municipalities may have ordinances that supersede the National Electric Code. They may be requiring you to do something specific to that jurisdiction. And these NM cables that are installed in there, uh, why, why are they in there? They are the ones that aren't terminated. They are additional circuits for future use. And as you notice, they're folded over and tucked away in a manner to prevent uh, accidental uh, contact with live parts or accidentally energizing those 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 uh, future circuits. But they're future circuits and helps the customer or the homeowner with if, if there's a, an additional item or something new that they want to install, they've already got 
two to three circuits additionally ready to go and and uh, all they have to do is go up into the attic or the crawl space or wherever it's rotted to and make uh make entry entry with that circuit into a junction box terminate and uh, extend that circuit out and they don't have to destroy sheetrock to get back into that box it's right. all there so again it's something you may uh need to talk about the hj in that jurisdiction and find out if they do have things like this and uh, and comply with those requirements Thank you.